his uh, undergraduate degree from the University of California, Davis, studying under a renowned evolutionary biologist, Theodosis Dobzhansky and Elena Stebbins. He received his undergraduate degree from the University of California, Berkeley. He originated the concept that organisms act as feedback systems in their evolution, affecting their own evolution as much as their own environment. He showed that genetic code is on a local optimum called an adaptive peak. He is writing a book. soil, sea, fresh water, and make the planet better for life, and building symbiotic alliances with the result that organisms increase the numbers of species on Earth at least as much as chemical or physical factors do. He has taught biology at all levels, from um, kindergarten to uh, post-college scholars. David is a uh, environmental leader who founded and is currently the president of the World Rainforest Fund, a nonprofit foundation dedicated to saving the Earth's tropical rainforest and biodiversity. He wrote an article that is a summary of scientific research on the effects of high atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide other than global warming. He was on the city of Lafayette's general plan advisory committee where he guided a 10-year general plan for that city that emphasized environmental sustainability, preserving open space, combating global warming and energy conservation. Starting in the 1990s, he served on the board of the directors and uh, as vice president to the Club of Rome of the United States of America, the environmental think tank that published the limits of growth in the 1970s. This is a computer simulation study that showed that continued growth and consumption of resources will lead society to disaster. He was on the board of directors of the East Bay chapter of the United States, the United Nations Association of the United States of America. Let me get that right, Dave, sorry. The United Nations Association of the United States of America from 2006 to 2009, where he is the lead environmental scientist. He gave the keynote address at their annual meeting and helped secure the passage of key resolutions on biodiversity, global warming, and the Kyoto Protocol. He conceived and helped secure passage of the Berkeley City Council, an ordinance banning the use of old growth rainforest and redwood in all products used by the city of Berkeley. The ordinance also required all business contracting with Berkeley to stop using old growth rainforest and redwood in any products or services Berkeley hires them to use or perform or in any product they sell to the city. They once carried the Ten Commandments for the Earth, a version of the original Ten Commandments, rewritten to focus on saving the Earth's environment while riding a camel down Mount Sinai. Uh, in a brief ceremony, he presented these Ten Commandments to a Bedouin youth who represented the indigenous people of the Earth and the youth of the planet, the generation inheriting the Earth for its stewardship. After completing this act, David swam for over an hour with a wild bottlenose dolphin in the Red Sea. I think there were signs <laughs> that were coming about through all that. Very good. David conceived the idea for and was the head organizer for a press conference for Nobel Prize winners on global environmental issues that was head, held at the time in the 100th Nobel Prize ceremonies in Stockholm, Sweden in December of 2001. He wrote a very popular poetry book of creative, beautiful poems called Honor Thy Salvo that sold over 1,200 copies and is in its uh, fourth printing. He is renowned for being especially socially skilled, excellent at working with and bringing out the best in people and inspiring them to have an interest in biology, the earth, its animals, and their habitats. He has inspired countless people for, to become environmentalists, 
passionate about saving the earth. He is an excellent public speaker who is, has lectured to business groups, churches, schools, and other venues on science and environmental issues. He is in the who's who of America. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. Seaborn. Thank you very much, Dave. That introduction was by, by the way, Dave Boland, who is um, the head of the Nevada Herpetological Society. The one's uh, herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. And he is actually, usually I bring my own animals to show. He today will be the provider of the animals uh, that we will show after my lecture. Um, I wanted to take care of one logistical uh, issue here, is that there is going to be some recording of the talk and they need sunlight, but we need it to be low enough for the slides. Do you want to adjust that to your liking and we'll see what kind of compromise works there? And the other logistical problem is, or issue is, where is the sign-in sheet? And is there anyone new who has not signed in? Raise your hand if you haven't signed in. Okay. All right. Uh, if it's too light for the slides, we, we don't need to do the recording. So we'll just do what we can do. Pardon me? Pardon me? Yeah. 